This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Who would make a heavyweight metal medium format camera with a wholly original shutter capable of producing the sharpest imaginable images on the Instax square format? Who would do something like that? Nons would! On this episode of In An Instant, we're taking a look at the remarkable Nans SL660, a triumph of engineering which challenges the very notion of what was thought to be possible in present day film camera manufacturing. Broncos country, let's ride. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today we're taking a close look at the Nons SL660, an SLR style camera compatible with the Instax Square format that may be one of the most powerful concepts presented in this bizarre age of modern film camera production. Before we discuss the features of this doinker, let's put this camera into context. Since the late 2010s, film camera manufacturing has dwindled to the point where instant camera companies are some of the only folks cracking out analog cameras. Aside from aberrations like Leica and wh whatever Pentax is planning to do, Polaroid and Fujifilm have been the unlikely bastions for retro modern camera tech. Realizing Fuji was amenable to third-party cameras compatible with their film, Lomography has kept the ball rolling with Instax cameras of their own. And several small businesses like Jolly Look, Mint, Escura, and Nons have invented unique additions to this growing little world of modern instant stoinklings. Making a camera is really f***ing hard. And when people yearn for the rebirth of something like the Polaroid SX70, it fails to take into account the magnitude of R&D investment and high-end user cost. That is where the Nons SL660 busts through the door like the FBI when I was rated for being too good at Madden, delivering an honest to gosh SLR camera in a time when that was really not thought to be feasible anymore. SLR means single lens reflex, and these cameras are distinct in that the image you see through the viewfinder is a direct reflection of the light passing through the lens. You're actually looking directly at what you're shooting. Cameras like the Instax Square SQ1 or Polaroid One Steps, for example, have optical viewfinders that are entirely detached from the lens. They act more as guides than a direct representation of what you're shooting. More importantly, they don't reflect what is or isn't in focus. These viewfinders work for certain kinds of cameras and shooting scenarios, but they aren't precision tools. A company you're likely familiar with, Mint, took this dearth in the industry and filled that dearth. Come on, baby, fill my dearth. They created rangefinder cameras like the SF70, also an Instax square body, which has a paired focusing patch inside that detached viewfinder so that you can nail focus. That brings us to the Polaroid SX70, the tentpole instant camera that is revered for its glass lens and extraordinarily rare SLR viewfinder functionality, something otherwise virtually non-existent in the 70 years since the first instant camera was released by Polaroid. So. In 2020, when a company I'd never heard of called Nons announced they were releasing an SLR Instax mini camera with interchangeable lenses, no less. I was like, what the frickin' heck? That can't be a thing. But it was indeed a thing, and I reviewed that thing. The SL42, and you should check out my video on it as I shot it through Colorado. It very much is the precursor to the SL660, which not only shoots the larger Instax square format, but really firms up everything with the unusual design this company has come up with for an SLR instant camera. The SL42 is capable of shockingly good images because you can adapt virtually any lens on it, but requires an extension tube to help 35 millimeter lenses optically cover the much larger size of Instax mini. Even then, there was a fair bit of vignetting, and when Nons announced an Instax Square camera, I was a little bit skeptical about how egregious vignetting would be on an even larger film size. Well, why am I doubting these people? Come on, bags. Look what they're capable of. They re-envisioned the lens mount, giving it a built-in optical reducer, helping coverage issues and making your perspective through the viewfinder more usable than it is on the SL42, which can be a bit of a challenge. Even so, the viewfinder coverage is limited and the adjustment period will be a few packs before you can really tell what you're getting with the entire frame. Uh, even with the advancements that they've made, the prism finder does not reflect the entire image area and in these tests, hope I can give you a baseline guide to work from if you do grab one. The other features present on this camera are no less revolutionary to instant shooting. 
Because you can toss any lens on here, you can shoot as wide open as you want. I've been using the stock NONS EF mount lens, which can open up to F1.8. And 1.8 on medium format gives a dump truck shallow depth of field. In comparison, the SX70's maximum aperture is F8. Quite a bit of difference in terms of light coming through the lens and potential for shallow depth of field. With the ability to put any manual EF lens on the body, you also have no limitation on what filters you can rock with it. It has a top shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. An Instax square is obviously locked to 800 ISO, which means you can't shoot lenses wide open outside. That's just too much light, big boy. But with the universal thread on whatever your chosen lens is, you can throw NDs on there, shoot Instax at ISO 100, and turn this camera into a powerhouse capable of shooting in literally every lighting scenario. I've shot this indoors with absolutely no fill lighting, outside with an ND to get bocalicious, and I find it's one of the most amenable instant cameras ever made for all shooting scenarios. Since I rarely use flash, having ISO 800 film and the ability to open up to F1.8 is a big load off when I'm approaching an interior. And as they say, interior crocodile alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. Another thing to note about lensing, you might notice Instax film in general is a very clean film. When used with superior lenses, it can produce results that resemble the fidelity once cherished by Fuji's discontinued FP100C. Instax is in truth a very similar film to its peel apart brother, especially with regard to color science. It doesn't have the same resolving power and dynamic range, but it's not that far off. So when you actually maximize Instax film with the proper camera and proper lens, it gives you pretty stunningly detailed images with remarkable color rendition. For professional photographers, this is quite useful. As I noted in the SF70 video, instant film has become a fairly useful companion in photo shoots. Clients like it, models like it, brands like it, and having a camera with precision manual controls and vivid results puts this in a tier of cameras I'd absolutely recommend to pros out there who want a body they can carry with them, shoot great looking secondary shots, and make everyone in the room go holy hecking peanut butter bananas on rye toast served at 10 a.m. after waking up from a rager with your friend Joey Bugatz. This is instant film? I didn't know it looked this good. The other key feature of this camera is the built-in light meter. Built-in meters do exist on a lot of instant cameras, but they're typically in service of automatic exposure. This meter is intended for shutter priority shooting, where you determine the shutter speed with the dial and the meter gives you a suggested f-stop to use. It works fairly well, though I've had some instances of misinformation from it giving such a broad reading, but overall, having this thing on board is another notch in the non's belt. That belt's getting heavy. Those pants are about to come down. There's a liberty to knowing you can just have this thing on you, need no other accessories, and just be able to do it up. Let's get into build quality. This is a big one for me. This Chungus is in full tank mode. It's constructed with an aluminum alloy shell, pretty shocking when you first hold it. 99.9% uh, .9 of all instant cameras after 1970 were fully plastic, sometimes nice plastic, but still nothing like this. Um, it feels like a truly professional camera body complete with steel dials and a very attractive wood hand grip. I respect wood, and when wood enters camera design, it typically looks fucking sick. And the build of the shutter is also fascinating. Like the SL42, you cock it with this bizarre secondary motion. It then goes absolutely kerplunk when you shoot it. A major reflection I have sitting here with this incredibly well-built camera for a while is like, why not make a camera that can shoot 120 or 35 millimeter film at this point? The truth is that instant film has a tremendously greater market share than any other film type, but with interest in 35 mil and 120 booming again, it would seem like almost a no brainer to just add a film transport mechanism into what is already an awesome design and sell that thing too. Mint is reportedly exploring this with a new 35 millimeter camera of their own, and these companies are somewhat similar in what they've been able to accomplish, so I don't know. Something to consider there, Pip. All right, one other piece of information that I should mention is that this camera is USB-C rechargeable. Holds a good charge for 10 or so packs. I don't know, it's information. Let's do pros and cons. Pros, optical opportunities with the possibilities afforded by this design and this lens mount, being able to shoot any focal length on Instax Square is pretty flippin' nice. And with the superior optics to any built-in lenses on the numerous other instant film cameras out there, it's a big calling card. 
Design, it's metal, it's frosty. If you get mugged, it's a guaranteed one punch kill shot. It's really well made and flexibility. It's very much a camera that can perform in absolutely any lighting scenario. You've got the built-in meter, you've got fast lenses, and uh, there's really no topping that. And cons, the viewfinder is still buggy for me. I wish it had a larger viewable image area and if they can eventually achieve that, I think they'd have a masterpiece on their hands. And frankly, there's not really many other cons other than maybe cost. It is a $600 camera. That is, in my opinion, completely reasonable and frankly, pretty affordable for what this camera is. Uh, a small team manufacturing something of this quality could have been much more expensive. Uh, Mint's cameras certainly are. Not hating on either, just saying. If you're sweating the price tag on this camera, then this camera probably wasn't designed with you in mind. Wow, that sounded awful. <laughs> That's really not me, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and drop this two pound freak on that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews breakdowns, guides, shoots, and all things instant.